What's up guys? Welcome back. Patrick here and moving on with the video series for the m and propositions with taxes. Let's do a quick review of what we've covered so far. So there's a couple of conclusions that we've come to. Number one, we said that the value of a levered firm is the value of an unlevered firm plus the present value of the interest tax shield. That's m and proposition one with taxes. In the last video, we mentioned that the return on equity for a firm increases with leverage, and it's this formula over here. It's the return of an unlevered firm plus the debt to equity ratio times the difference between unlevered cost of capital and cost of debt times one minus T. And that is eminent proposition two with taxes. And we also found out that there's an implication that the more leverage a company takes on, the weighted average cost of capital decreases. Now in this particular video, I wanna go over the effects on the share price when a firm increases leverage, and I'm gonna do so through this scenario here. So an all equity firm will generate $8 million in free cash flow next year that will grow at 5% forever. It has a weighted average cost of capital of 10%, the firm will borrow $64 million in debt, repurchase shares, and only make interest payments. The firm has 4 million shares and a 40% tax rate. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by creating a balance sheet for the all-equity firm before they go through their restructuring, before they issue the debt. So we're going to have assets on the left side, and then we're just gonna have equity on the right side. There's not gonna be any debt. What are the values here gonna be though? So we're told that this all equity firm will generate 8 million in free cash flow next year that will grow at 5% forever. Now, so far, we've been saying that the firm value is what? It's the free cash flow of a firm over its weighted average cost of capital. Well, this here assumes that the free cash flows are constant. Basically, the firm value is, if you wanna be very general, it's the present value of all of the free cash flow in the future. However, in this unit, you're usually gonna see it in this format because it's just gonna be a perpetuity, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. Like in this case, notice that the payments are gonna grow at 5% forever. So this is actually gonna be a growing perpetuity that we're gonna deal with. So in this case, the firm value is gonna be the free cash flow in one period, all over the weighted average cost of capital minus the growth rate, because it's a growing perpetuity. Those free cash flows are growing every year at 5%. And we're told that the weighted average cost of capital for this firm is 10%. Now, a note I want to make is this is the weighted average cost of capital, but since this is an all equity firm, what else can this be? Well, this is also the return on equity of the firm, or it's the unlevered cost of capital. Remember I mentioned before in previous videos that when you have an all equity firm, all three of these things are the same. Weighted average cost of capital, return on equity, unlevered cost of capital. So I thought I would make a note of that because questions can give you one of these three items. In this case, they gave us the weighted average cost of capital. So the free cash flow next year is $8 million. Let's just put 8M here. And then um, the weighted average cost of capital is 10%, so that's 0.1. And the free cash flow is growing at 5% forever, so that would be 0 0.05. So 8 million divided by 0 0.05, that gives us 160 million. So that is the value of the all equity firm or the unlevered firm. And that is the value of the assets. And because there's no debt, that's also the value of the equity, 160 million. Now we're also told that this all equity firm here has 4 million shares. So this equity here, it also has 4 million shares. So you can put that in brackets. So the total equity is worth 160 million and there's 4 million shares outstanding. 
So with that extra information here, we can actually figure out what is the current share price for this firm. And the current share price is basically the total equity, 160 million, divided by 4 million shares outstanding, which gives a current share price of $40 for this all equity firm. Now in the past, when we've done questions like this, when we've took on debt and then repurchased shares with it, we've sort of did it in one step, meaning that whenever a question like this came up, I would have an unlevered balance sheet, and then I would right away make a balance sheet for the levered firm. So we would have the debt of 64 million, the equity goes down, et cetera, et cetera. Well, in reality, what happens in between these two steps is that there's actually an announcement to the market that the firm is going to undertake this process, that they're going to restructure that right side of the balance sheet, that they're going to take on that debt of 64 million and then repurchase shares. And as we know from M&M Proposition 1, when a firm takes on debt, the value of that firm goes up. And so if you remember back in Finance 1, we talked about efficient markets. And when markets are efficient, whenever news comes out, that gets priced in to the company right away. The value of the company fluctuates right away to news if markets are efficient. So before the balance sheet even changes, before we take on that debt onto the balance sheet, the value of the firm actually goes up by the present value of that interest tax shield. All right, so does that make sense? So before the firm actually takes on the debt, just the fact that they announced it, that they're going to in the future, makes the value of the firm go up right away because the market has to price that information right away even though that debt issuance hasn't happened yet. So the value of the levered firm now is going to be the value of the unlevered firm, 160 million, plus the present value of that interest tax shield. And the interest tax shield, notice how this debt, it's going to be permanent because it says that the firm is going to be only making, they're only going to be making interest payments. And whenever you have permanent debt, we mentioned that the present value of that interest tax shield is basically the debt times the tax rate. Well, in this case, the debt that the company will take on is 64 million and the tax rate is 0 0.4. And when you do this in your calculator, you end up getting 185.6 million. That is the value of this levered firm now. Okay, so the value of this levered firm is 185.6 million. And so when that announcement comes on, this is how the balance sheet is gonna look like. You're gonna have 185.6 million now for the assets on the left side, but it's still an all equity firm. Right, so notice how the value of the assets went up by 25.6 million, but the value of the equity also goes up by 25.6 million because we're still in this sort of middle announcement stage before we have the debt on the balance sheet, which would be here. And the reason why I want to show this sort of middle stage is because of this share price. It's actually changing before we take on debt. So now we still have 4 million shares outstanding here. So let's actually not write current. Let's just write uh, share price. So now the share price is going to be the value of the equity, 185.6 million, divided by those 4 million shares outstanding.
And when you do that in your calculator, you end up getting $46.40 for the share price. So notice how the share price went up by $6.40. And that makes sense because taking on more debt increases the value of the company. The company is going to pay less taxes. So it makes sense for the share price to go up. And that's the particular reason why I wanted to include this middle stage is to show you that this share price actually goes up before the balance sheet changes. So knowing that the share price goes up, we can now make a pretty accurate balance sheet for the levered firm. So now we're going to be including the debt and then repurchasing the equity. So this equity is actually going to go down now. So the value of the assets is still going to stay the same. It's going to be 185.6. And then the debt is going to be 64 million. And then we're going to use that debt to repurchase 64 million of this equity here, this 185.6. So when you take 64 million away from 185.6, you end up getting 121.6. Million. So again before, what we've been doing is taking this step and going straight to this step. But in this particular example, because we're dealing or because we're going into more detail about the share price, I want to include this middle step. And this is actually what happens. The value of the firm, the value of the equity goes up once the announcement of that debt issuance is made not when the actual debt issuance happens because of efficient markets that news gets priced in right away. Now, what we can do, since we know what the share price is before that debt is issued, we can figure out how many shares are repurchased. So the number of shares repurchased If you remember when we were dealing with no taxes, it was just that debt figure divided by that same share price because the share price was consistent. Well, in this case, the share price changed before the debt issuance. So we take the 64 million in debt that we take on and divide it by that new share price, $46.40. And this is actually one of the main reasons why I want to do this preliminary step is to get that correct amount, the number of shares repurchased. Because a lot of times what students will do is they'll take that 64 million of debt and divide it by the uh, all equity um, share price, the initial share price of $40. But what happens in reality is that that share price actually rises before that debt issuance, before that share repurchase. So the number of shares repurchased is based on that new share price. So you take the $64 million worth of equity divided by the new share price of $46.40 to see how many shares are repurchased. And when you do that in your calculator, you end up getting 1,379,310 shares repurchased. So that's how many shares are going away. So what's the number of shares left in the company or left outstanding? Well, it's the 4 million of shares that we had initially. So this is 4 million. And then we're going to be subtracting the number of shares that we're repurchasing. And when you subtract those two figures, you end up getting 2,620,690 shares remaining. So this equity here is composed of this many shares now. Let me just write shares here. All right, so we started with 4 million shares. Now we have 2.6 million shares. And if you take this figure, this is how you can actually check your answer. If you take this figure and you multiply it by that current share price, $46.40, 
you should get something very close to 121.6 million. Perhaps not exact because there was some rounding that I did over here, but it should be fairly close. Okay, so let's do a quick recap here of what happened. So we had an all equity firm, $160 million worth of assets, $160 million worth of equity. And then the firm announces that they are going to take on $64 million worth of debt and then repurchase shares with that. And before that debt issuance even happens, because we're dealing or we're assuming we're dealing with efficient markets, the value of that firm goes up right away because taking on debt gives us that interest tax shield, which makes the value of the assets of the firm go up. So the firm value goes up from 160 million to 185.6 million. And because this is still before that debt issuance is happening, the equity is worth 185.6 million as well. And we're still, uh, the firm still has 4 million shares outstanding. So we can actually calculate the new share price by taking that new equity value, 185.6 million, dividing by 4 million shares and we get $46.40. So the share price went up from $40 to $46.40 before the actual debt issuance happens, before the actual share repurchase happens. And then finally, we take on the debt of 64 million. So the right side of the balance sheet, we have to add 64 million here. And then we're gonna use this 64 million to repurchase shares but the shares now are priced at $46.40 so we are repurchasing 1,379,310 shares from this 4 million so that means that the number of shares is going to decrease by that amount so the number of shares left in this new levered firm is the 4 million originally minus that 1.379 million shares repurchase, and we end up getting 2,620,690 shares remaining in that new lever firm. And again, you could check your answer. If you take this, multiply it by the share price, you'll get something very close to 121.6, right? So the main takeaway from this video is that when a company is going to issue debt, usually its share price is gonna go up because the value of that interest tax shield makes the value of the firm go up as a whole. So that's the difference between M&M propositions um, without taxes and with taxes. Without taxes, that share price stayed consistent. It would have just stayed at 40. Because we're dealing with taxes now, we get that interest tax shield, the share price rises. And in this particular case, it went up to $46.40.